everybody, welcome to the show. Hello everyone, welcome back to Raising AZ, this YouTube channel all about homeschooling. My name is Amanda, I am a teacher turned homeschool mom, and I work from home. Part of what I do to help our family budget is I run this YouTube channel. So this YouTube channel and the ad revenue that comes off of it, which is not a lot, let me tell you. And some of the things that we sell on our website, like planners and journals and that kind of thing, the little bit of money that we bring in from those things that helps our budget and helps us pay for our homeschooling costs. Basically running this YouTube channel helps me cover our curriculum for the year and a few other things and that really helps us out. And so I have a little bit of experience when it comes to working from home because a lot of homeschoolers find that they need some kind of work. They can't just live on one income. I know some people who are homemakers. I know some people who are, they work part time either out of the house or at home. They work full time out of the house or at home. And sometimes it's tricky, especially if you are working from home with homeschoolers. It is a whole different thing. People don't understand. It's very difficult to get people to understand how you're working from home, which I think like a lot of us have done over the past two years, right? Um, so people understand the working from home. They don't always understand that the kids are there too. Like early in the pandemic, I think a lot of people understood the difficulties, but now that like most people have their kids back in school, it's still a very difficult thing and people just don't get it. I went to a um, conference a few years ago and one of the sessions I was there it was a mom conference for like mommy bloggers and YouTubers and people, female run businesses and stuff like that. And uh, one of the sessions was being effective while working at home. And I remember sitting in the session, I was listening to it and like her only advice was like, make sure you just work when the kids are in school. And one of the, one of the people in the session was like, well, my kids aren't in school. And she goes, well, then you should put them in daycare. And it was like the most unhelpful session that I, I sat in that whole week, that whole weekend. It was a fantastic conference, but like that was just mind blowing that like, no one had an understanding of like some of us have kids and we're still working in our home. They don't understand what it's like to have kids in your home while you're trying to do all the things that are involved with having a job or running a business like I do out of your basement, right? So like I have my kids home all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I also still have emails and sponsorships and affiliates and a website that needs to be built to maintain. I have products that I need to write, things that I need to work on, projects. Like I have lots of things to do and I have kids who are constantly around and that makes life tricky. So how do I do that? So I'm gonna give you my top tips for working from home when you have homeschoolers around because they're always around when you're homeschooling, right? But before I do that, you're wondering what kind of products do we sell? Well, we have planners that are coming out very, very soon. I'm just putting the final touches. They'll be out very soon. But I also sell things like this, the Essential Science Journal. These journals are awesome. They work with any curriculum you have. It is a great way to go through the scientific method. This complimentary journal works with any homeschool curriculum that you want. You pick the science experiment and this book will help you walk through how to make it into the scientific method, how to write down your observations and your procedures and do all the things that make it into like a real official science experiment. So you'll definitely want to check this out. I'll put a link below to our shop and they are available on Amazon. I have 10 tips for working from home when you have homeschoolers. And my first tip is to find a schedule that works for you and pick a time when you can do your work on a regular basis. So for me, that is quiet time. So every day after lunch, our kids go into quiet time and they have basically an hour and a half to two hours where that is like their designated time to do independent play. They can do drawing, coloring, playing with their toys or magnet tiles, but it is independent and it is to be like quiet. So it's not a time for like blasting music. They're not running around. It is a quiet, relaxing time. So that is a time when I go and do things like this. So I work on my emails and all that kind of stuff. And so this is when I work. That is predominantly when I get most of my work done, probably 75 to 80% of my work gets done in that amount of time. So that is very important to have kind of a schedule and know when you're going to get to get to your work. And everyone's schedule is different. So for me, that's what works. I know some people have different times that work for them. So some people really like to work before their kids get up, um, get up early, like five in the morning and work before their kids get up at seven. I'm not one of those people. I like to sleep. 
I, I cannot get up in early in the morning. It doesn't work for me. So that is not a productive time for me. If I need extra time, I will stay up after the kids go to bed and work then. But knowing when I'm gonna do the majority of my work really, really helps me kind of prioritize what needs to get done on those days. And then any extra can come kind of late in the later hours. Number two, airplane mode. I put my phone on airplane mode when I go into like a work time. So from one to one, uh, two thirty or three o'clock, whenever we get out of quiet time, my phone is on airplane mode. For the simple reason is that I find I always get phone calls during that time. And it's never things that are like, I need to know. It is always like my friend who wants to tell me about the date that she was on while she's on her work break, or my mom who wants to chat about what we're gonna do over the weekend. Like it's always people who are calling because people forget that you are working and they don't know what your schedule is like and what your day is like. And so because you're not in an office, people forget. And so by just putting my phone on airplane mode, um, it helps me not get phone calls and not get texts that I feel like I need to respond to or get onto a phone call that I need to respond to. You can try using like the night mode, like on your phone where you can schedule to like automatically go quiet so you don't get emails and stuff. If that works for you, great. But I find for me, the people who call me are the people who would like override my like silent mode at night. So it'd be like my mom, my sister, my best friend. So those tend to be the people who call and want to have long conversations while I'm working. So for me, airplane mode is has been a game changer because I know I'm going to get a good solid amount of time where I'm not going to get interrupted by phone calls or text messages. Tip number three, homeschooling doesn't have to be in the morning. I know a lot of people who don't homeschool in the morning. Like they homeschool in the afternoon, they homeschool in the evening, they homeschool on the weekends. Like that's their like school heavy day while they do their work in the morning because that's when they are most effective and that's when it works for them. Um, or that's when their job requires them. So like the nice thing about homeschooling is A, it takes so much less time than traditional schooling. And so you can actually work in smaller blocks throughout your week and you can fit it into times when you're not really expecting to be able to traditionally do school. So I know some people who like do most of their work in the evenings after they come home from working. Like that's when they do their home, their kids do their homeschool. Homeschooling can be whenever you need it to be and whenever it works for you and your family. And that is a great thing. Tip number four, have a plan for your week. This has been a great thing that has really helped me is I know what tasks I do on what day. So for example, when I sit down on quiet time on Mondays, I work on writing my emails. So I go through and write my email for my subscriber list, which you should totally join. And that's what I do on Monday. So I try to get that done, put in all the links, get all the pictures, get it all set up, um, answer emails, answer comments. Those are the things that I do. So Monday is for emails. Tuesday is for writing. So usually Tuesdays I sit down and I start writing out all my notes for the videos I'm gonna film. I start writing the articles that go on our website, on the blog. I start doing any kind of writing that needs to get done happens on Tuesdays. Wednesdays, it's all about graphics and Pinterest. That's what I do. I just edit photos and make graphics and work on Pinterest. Fridays is social media day. So I go and I like get our photos and I edit them. I start writing captions and figuring all of that out, scheduling that, putting it all in the calendar. That's what I do. And this helps because it's when you sit down to work, when you're working from home and you've literally been doing a whole bunch of things, like I've done the homeschooling, I've made lunch, I've cleaned up after lunch, I've gotten the kids organized. When you sit down, you're like, first off, it takes a few minutes to be like, okay, what am I gonna do? I don't need to think about what I'm gonna do. I'm like Monday, email, perfect. It helps get you into the zone because you already know what task, what is your major task to complete that day? And just kind of having that routine and that system really has helped me kind of find a flow and get more things done in a week. Um, yes, obviously you're gonna have projects that pop up or things that need more attention, but at least it gives me like the things that I need to do every single week consistently. It gives me a time and a space to do that mentally. Tip number five I have is have a schedule for your chores. This doesn't seem like it makes sense and it's not connected, but it totally does. Because when you're working from home, it seems really easy to like do that load of laundry or wash those dishes or, you know, wipe that counter down and all of a sudden your work time is gone, right? Because you're like, oh, it'll only take five minutes or, oh, I gotta do this. Giving yourself a schedule for when you're gonna do the household chores makes your life better because you know they're gonna get done. It doesn't have to get done right now. For example, I only do laundry on the weekends because that is when I do it. Like it is, I don't think about the laundry for the whole week. 
And so Monday through Friday, that's when I do laundry. That works for me. I know a lot of people do not work like that, but that works for me. So when I sit down on Mondays and I'm, you know, working on writing out my email, I'm not thinking about like, okay, I gotta go and switch that laundry over before it stinks or thinking about dusting the bedrooms or cleaning the bathrooms. Like I know when those things are gonna happen. And so I can like just let it go and know that I will do that at, at, at a different time. It frees up the mental space to actually focus and get your work done really is what it does. And it really, really helps. Number six, this is something that you'll see in a lot of pr productivity type things. And it really does help if you can get in the right mindset, batching. So batching is basically when you sit down and you do a whole bunch of tasks that are all similar. So for example, I might sit down and write all my emails that I'm gonna write for a whole month. So I might write four emails because my email goes out weekly um, and I will do the emails for the whole month. So then basically the next Monday, I just have to pop in the right links and maybe a picture or two and then it's done. That can be really, really helpful because you're if you are in the zone and you're already kind of in the flow and the mindset of what you wanna be doing, it really means you can get a lot done very quickly. I find, I can do that sometimes with emails. I find it really, really good when it comes to like writing down what I'm gonna do for filming. Um, but I have to be in the right zone. And so I don't force it that for personally I don't force it but I know I do try to pay attention that if I'm like really like writing out something on a writing day on Tuesday and I'm like oh man like that kind of sparked this and that sparked that and I'm like, I got this I will sit down and like just kind of keep going and going for as much and as long as I can before because at least then if I if it's not finished I have some really good points and really good ideas already written down but I also have like a whole bunch of things and so if I have a week where I have a little bit of writer's block brain fart, mom brain, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have a few things in the background that I can just kind of pull and grab and just add to. I don't force it. Some people are very like hardcore batchers. I'm not one of them. But if you can get in the zone and you find yourself in the zone, instead of like stopping and switching to a different task, sometimes it's more efficient just to like keep doing the same task. So batching can be really, really helpful. Number seven, it does help. Um, get some help. So if you are working from home, sometimes you need to delegate. And sometimes that is means you need to get some help. Um, for example, I don't do any of my editing on when it comes to filming these videos. My husband does that. I delegated that job to him. He enjoys doing it. He's very good at it. So he edits all my videos. That frees up a lot of time for me to do all the other business side. Sometimes it means getting a babysitter or a mother's help or someone who can come and help you or you can send your kids to. For me, that is my mom. So typically, not every week, but often she takes my kids for an hour and a half to two hours on a Tuesday morning after they're done school. So that gives me, again, a, a, kind of a bonus little block of time when I get to work on extra things or things that I want to get done. And sometimes that becomes work, sometimes it becomes other tasks, but that it's just a helpful little time. Sometimes you need to delegate your curriculum. There are tons of like online courses or programs that you can get your kids to do that means you don't have to like spend the hours prepping to do their homeschool lessons so you have a little bit of a break. For example, if math is not your strong suit and you're spending like hours and hours and hours prepping and trying to figure out how to do the math, it might really be in your advantage to get a program that does all the teaching for you, like teaching textbooks or Khan Academy, something like that, where you don't have to do any of the teaching. You just have to sit by and kind of like assist if needed because now you've freed up some mental load and some time because you're not doing as much prepping. Number eight, you wanna set yourself up with your space and everyone's space is going to look different. Some people really need to have like a designated desk. Some people need to have like a space at a table. I'm not gonna lie, my space is sitting on the couch. We have an L-shaped couch that kind of goes in the little nook of our um, TV area. And so I sit there and on the back I keep a a jar with all of my pens and stuff and my notebooks and I sit there with my laptop and I do all of my work on the couch. It works for me. I pop on a movie, something that I've seen a million times before because that's how my brain works and it becomes my background noise and I I work on the couch. Some people like to have some music on. I am not typically one of those people. Finding your space, knowing that you have an area to go and sit and has everything that you're going to need for whatever project you're working on is is really really helpful number nine sometimes you need to get away so um i've been trying to do it like maybe once a month taking an evening or an afternoon or something and going away from the house and i take my laptop and a pair of headphones 
and I go to Starbucks and I work. And typically I consider this like a bonus work time. So I will do my work in the afternoon and then once my husband comes home, I will go and do kind of bonus work or extra project work. And I sit down at Starbucks. It gives me time where like no one's bothering me because there's no kids. And I will put on headphones and I will listen to music, music with no words, but is not classical. Like it has to have a beat and it has to be kind of modern, but it can't have any words. So I have like a very specific iTunes playlist and I listen to that and I will work for two or three hours and get a whole bunch of stuff done. And it's just like chain of scenery. It's kind of the, the separation and it's knowing that you have this amount of designated bonus time really, really does help. And number 10, the last tip I have is that it does get easier. When your kids are little, it does seem impossible to get things done because they want to do everything with you. They want to like you to hold them. They need your help constantly. It does feel like they will never get older and you're going to struggle forever. It does get easier. As they get older, they are more independent. They're able to entertain themselves longer. They're able to do things without constantly being supervised. Like you don't have to stand over top of them and watch them. Um, like I don't worry that Alexi's gonna eat puzzle pieces. She's almost seven, right? Like there's, you have, they have some more independence and you you don't have to like sit there and supervise them intently. So sometimes my kids get into a zone, they're playing magnet tiles or painting and I will come down and grab my laptop and bring it upstairs and I will answer comments on our YouTube videos, which if you ever wanna leave a comment, definitely leave one here. And I will answer comments or, you know, comments here or on Instagram or, or TikTok or Facebook or whatever. And, and it just kind of gives me kind of, kind of little bonus moments throughout the day. And as your kids get more independent, they need less help with their homeschooling and they start to be able to like do a lot of it themselves. Like Alexi can read. And so she's like starting to read more and more of her curriculum and more and more of her books and needs me less and less and less. And so I am teaching her less time because I really am only explaining one or two concepts because she's able to read the activities or read what the question is asking her to do and how to answer it. and so I just have to check. I don't have to like sit there and hold her hand and coddle her as she like goes through the activity and read every sentence. She can actually do it by herself now. So as they get older, they get more independent, they have more skills and they can do more on their own and that frees up some time for you. So I hope these tips really help you. I hope that you guys um, can take some of these and like run with them and help you do some great work from home and actually get some work done. So if you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get notifications and then make sure that you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And like I said, join our email list and thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week.